t-shirt remade etsy shop dress oh i think it was in a house i moved into boots screw fix chicken model zone this is lay of the land my gardening vlog and general catch-up time it is the 8th of june 2021 i'm going to show you what's been happening in my garden and what i'm up to let's get to it so why no intro in the greenhouse today well number one it is boiling hot in here and i didn't fancy baking to death but the main reason is i've got things in the ground now these are japanese cucumbers uh, my friend rose in pennsylvania sent me the seeds and i've moved them on now and planted them out I've also got a couple of tomato plants here. My mum bought some from a friend after mine haven't done so well. As you can see, there is the greenest thing in this greenhouse is the bindweed. And then down here, all I've got left, some rosemary cuttings and some French beans. You can also see a few feathers around everywhere. That's because my chickens got temporarily placed in here after a fox attack, which I will talk more about later. The pansies still going strong. I had an allium in the middle. It got eaten. But this one has bloomed. Isn't it beautiful? And I've seen, oh, just proving my point. I've, I was about to say I've seen so many bees on this. And there's one right now and my mulberry tree i think i've decided i am going to plant this at the end of the garden near my vegetable beds as part of the food forest effect because mulberries of course are edible just outside to the right here these are all the seeds i put them out here during the day they're in semi-shade and then they're getting absolutely roasted by the sun but i've not actually got that many left to be honest i want to do some more sowings of things like pak choy mizuna maybe even some daikon but i'll probably direct sow them here at the front my rose is putting on more and more and more foliage it's very spiky though compared to a lot of roses and i can already see it's absolutely covered in green fly so i need to relocate some ladybirds up here so they can help with that and my one of my lobelia is about to flower these are all lobelia down here hopefully they're going to make a beautiful cascade effect my mum bought a delphinium and look at this the slugs have totally murdered it and same with my parsley really a mixture of my chickens getting on it and ripping it up and slug damage but we do have one winner in this bed I'm not sure entirely what this is, but it's just burst into bloom and it looks absolutely beautiful. I see quite a lot of bees on this one too, along with on these feral strawberries. This purple hebe up to my strawberry basket. The opium poppies have gone mad. Hopefully I'll see some flowers off these guys soon because they're sure surely putting out a lot of foliage my strawberry is hanging on there and it's putting out a runner so what i will do is pin this down to a flower pot with some compost in and then i'll be able to make a strawberry plant off it so even if i don't get any fruit off these strawberries i will get baby strawberry plants this big shrub to the right of the swing is flowering too. I'm not sure what it is. Perhaps a type of jasmine. Smells absolutely amazing. And just these pretty little white flowers. Intimidating big shrub. Over on this side, the mystery plant from last time. I wasn't sure what it was. It's a rhododendron. And actually, if I look across my neighbor's gardens, or if I did a couple of days ago, I could see them all flowering all the way across. My mum says it's a feral one, she didn't plant it, but I'm quite happy to have it. So we'll keep that in check with some pruning so it doesn't get out of control. And the black elder is now flowering. I love these flowers so much. I think they're so pretty. They have that classic elder flower star shape and the same scent, but they've just got that pink blush to them. 
very pretty. I really love the black elder, it's one of my favourite, uh, more decorative species in our garden. The guinea pigs are out today, they're mowing the lawn for me. My dad made them this little tractor and then on sunny days they come outside and they trim the grass for us. You can see the camellia has finally sort of stopped flowering. <laughs> it's still going in a few places but I don't think there's any fresh buds on it. So, ooh, see they're just dropping off now. Well done camellia, you've done a fantastic job. Down here I hacked back all of the weeds recently and my girls have been helping keep them in check. Uh, so hopefully this azalea is going to recover. I can see a flower bud on it. So I can't wait to see what that's going to look like in a couple of days. And that shrub over there is flowering too. Here in the quadrangle, the lettuce is just starting to go over. It's getting a bit hot for it. I think it's done fantastically well. We've been eating this for lots of lunches over the last few weeks, but it is just coming into the time of year when lettuce starts bolting. It gets a bit too hot and it just wants to run off. We've been having a lot of problems with slugs as well. You can see some slug damage here. At night, this bed is crawling with them. It's really grim. So I have to make sure I wash my lettuce very carefully before serving a salad. The garlic is coming up to harvest time really, but I'm concerned it's not really swollen up as much as it should have. And we will have to look at raising this soil level uh, before the next planting, I think. Oh look, there's also a little oak tree that shouldn't be there. So that needs rescuing from there and putting in a pot. The rocket's gone mad. We're gonna put two of the tomato plants in here, I think, C cut this back a bit. Uh, again, we've been eating lots of it. It just goes crazy. And look how well my parsnips are doing. They're coming along great. Lots of beautiful foliage, hopefully a lot of growth underground as well. But the biggest change in this area is an extra growing space. Last time all this area was weeds, but I've hacked them back and I did it old school style. I dug it over and pulled them up because there was a lot of the geranium and it has a very thick fibrous root that you can't really mulch over without a very deep layer of compost. So now I've got beans in here growing up this huge trellis. I've got courgettes and then some flowers around, so lupins, asters, and a rather worse for wear nasturtium that I hope is going to bounce back. It got a bit too cooked from being in the greenhouse, so I can't wait to see this covered in bean flowers and then beans. Down here has had a big change as well. This has had a really good tidy up. So the pallet that had compost has gone and this soil down here was really, really good quality because we'd had compost base here. So now I've got a few different things. There's a, su a small sunflower over there, squash, uh, echinacea, some dill at the back, artichokes, nigella, these itty bitty itty 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 tiny seedlings our celery, more lupins, more artichokes, some old lettuces that really need planting, new lettuces, another artichoke. These are dahlias or dahlias depending on how you say it and another sunflower. So I'm really hoping this is gonna just take off it does need a little more TLC than some of my other areas because the plants in it are so young. So I have been watering it pretty much daily. Out in front of the shed now, all of the hay has been knocked down and the beans have been planted out. So they are ready to climb up in front of the shed. Down here, I scattered a bunch of chard and other seeds and they're starting to come up. These, this very distinctive seedling shape is brassica, which is a huge family of plants. Cabbages, cauliflower, radishes, and a few other things that I can't remember now off the top of my head because I'm getting distracted by this aeroplane noise. There's also a squash down here. I had some cauliflowers and they were all brutally murdered, but it looks like this one 
is growing back from the stem so come on I hope you can do that and there that is probably plant of the year doing the best it can that's one of my courgettes and I'm really looking forward to having fresh courgettes from the garden then down here I planted out some bunches of spring onions that had been languishing in a seed tray for far too long hopefully they're gonna do well as well in the compost zone my mum cleared this area of weeds yesterday or the day before and has laid out another raised bed that we had the plan is to make this a permanent bed for cuttings so fill it with a mix of very very sandy soil and then have a mesh top on it a chicken wire top on it so cats can't get in there and use it as a toilet and then take cuttings and grow them on in here the hope is that it will work better than doing cuttings in pots because they'll have a bigger pool of moisture available to them so they're less likely to dry out and die in the woodland zone it's fun thinking up names for all of these areas in the woodland zone i now have inoculated logs these guys have shiitake spawn on them so I spent an afternoon drilling holes, filling them with uh, inoculated dowels and then sealing them up with beeswax. I really hope this is going to take off. I say that about all my plants. I've just realised I've said that about 20 times already this video. But, you know, I think that's, that's just gardening to a T. I hope this is going to work. I hope this is going to take off. I hope it's going to try its best. <laughs> you just have to keep hoping. Gardening is an expression of hope it's an expression of belief in the future um so yeah i hope all of these things are going to take off down here this is a task i have started today so you remember our big huge willow pile i have started working on it so what i'm doing is taking branches off stripping off the leaves and the very small twigs and then sorting them into piles so this one is like willow whips that are thinner like much smaller than a finger this pile is ones that are more about a finger's width and then larger ones i have over there and the hope is i'm going to bundle these up keep them for future use and then when i want to do weaving with them i'll soak them in a big container like uh, the bathtub that i've kept and then I'll be able to weave baskets or artwork or whatever out of them. So it's just about managing resources while tidying up the garden. The hay barn today is fully stocked. We've just had a fresh delivery of hay and straw bales. But the hay they gave us was all like falling apart. So thanks for that. Made it not so fun to carry down the garden. And I'm covered in like hay rash now but plenty of straw we've stocked up on as well i don't have any metal bins yet for the chicken feed i've not had a chance to invest in those by which i mean i am a little bit broke down by the old apple tree everything's looking lush and green and the tree itself is looking really healthy actually we've got lots of good foliage coming through I'm eyeing up this branch here. I think it would be perfect for hanging a swinging chair off. So that's gonna be one of my projects. Then here in my back food forest growing area, I made the executive decision to lay down some cardboard at this end because I didn't have enough new seedlings to put in this bed. So I've decided that this one I'm just gonna leave for this season and see how it goes this area is actually doing better than i thought my gooseberry bushes are coming through one of them even has a gooseberry on i'll see if i can zoom in for you and find it can you see it that green ball that is a gooseberry i have two gooseberries on this bush the apple tree is in full leaf now as well and my alliums down here are doing nicely they're not as big in globe <laughs> I can hear my mum talking to the chickens down the end with her hands on her hips. As I was saying, my alliums are blooming nicely down here as well. And even some of my sweet corn has survived. So I've got one over there in the middle of this shot. My raspberries are in leaf as well. Two of them have survived. 
but the trouble with this area is it does get very 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 sun baked which is good as well you need plants need the sunshine to grow but it can be a bit overwhelming so what i am planning eventually as i mold this space is having some shrubs at the front here so having mulberry bush having sage or rosemary just having some shrubs to help cast some extra shade into the middle here this is my second sweet corn bed then these raspberries are coming along my autumn fruiting ones the ash tree which i cut down the juvenile ash tree has coppiced so now it's making me some nice lovely straight ash poles that i'm sure i can find a use for by the back fence i've got two of these tomato oasis this is the this is the second one i've got one behind me uh on the other side of the ash tree but here i've just taken some of my bagged compost made a mound planted one of the tomato plants that my mum bought in the middle and then just surrounded them with companion plants. So I've got nasturtium, there's a little tiny marigold there that I grew from seed. These are calendula. And the idea is that the companion flowers sprout up and grow around it and protect the base. And the tomato will, of course, take off and shoot up. Here's another one of my apples putting on new leaves and new growth. <laughs> Willow's being very noisy over there. She's come out on her own and now she's just kicking up a fuss about it. Down here got my currants. One of the, well, two of them really seem to have died from being sunbaked, but this one has survived. And they were only a pound each from Poundland, so I'm not too worried. Down here, my onions are doing quite well. I was weeding here yesterday, that's why you can see some sort of flopped bits of geranium. And I actually came across a frog, which was great because frogs hop around eating slugs. They're a very good animal to have in your garden. So I hope that frog wasn't too surprised when faced with it and I went, oh, a frog. And I hope he's going to stick around. Um, and maybe he knows that eventually I'm planning to build a pond. But who knows? I've got lettuces down here that are doing remarkably well considering how hot it gets. This patch here at the end does get some shade from the huge ash tree in the corner though, which is great. Cauliflower's still going, uh, my courgette, and again some more brassicas and the last apple tree. And then up here, one of the changes, there's now spikes on top of the hen house to hopefully stop another fox incident like we had. Madam, can I help you? Why, why are you kicking up such a fuss? Huh? What's wrong? So that's what's been going on in my garden. What's been going on with me? Well, I've been not that well this week. I had infection in the Garmin run around my right hand side wisdom tooth and ended up having to go for an emergency dental appointment and get some antibiotics to sort it out which was not so fun um, and I'm not so happy to be taking antibiotics because I don't want to kill off all the good bacteria in my gut so now I've got to find time to go into town and buy a load of natto and probiotics and stuff to rebalance that which isn't great um, I went out with a friend to a country estate um, and I was going to do another tour video like I did of the River Hill Gardens one. But to be honest, I was so tired and not feeling well because of the tooth. So I didn't. And actually, I'm quite glad I did because it wasn't so much a garden. It was more a country estate with like lawns and things. So I think it might just end have ended up being quite a boring video because it was just like grass 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 I mean there was um a few architectural follies I think it was a, it was nice to go to but it was one of those places where you're a bit like was it worth 10 pounds to go into mm, I don't really think so but I'm really glad I went out uh it was really nice to hang out with my friend oh look Willow they've all come to see you look they're all wondering why you're kicking up such a fuss 
So I will release you back to them. <laughs> so that's it for Load of the Land. Uh, please stay tuned. I have lots of projects lined up. It's just a matter of time and money as everything is in this life. I'm really enjoying making these videos for you and I hope you're enjoying seeing my garden even when there's an annoying chicken kicking up a fuss in the background. Okay, bye!